is all money, good money. Should you forego business opportunities? Now, aren't we in business to make money? Think about it. Why would anybody say, look, thanks, but no thanks? I'm good. <laughs> I don't want your business. Well, uh, there is some truth to that saying that all money is not good money. Because there are certain things you have to consider. And I'm going to go down the list quickly and tell you under what circumstances you have to wait. Why certain jobs you may just simply have to pass on. Sometimes you get a client that just simply underfunded. They have big aspirations for small bank accounts. And no matter what you do, they are not going to be able to fund those aspirations and it's just going to make your job impossible. Some companies require a financial statement before they even talk to you because they understand the importance of this and what a problem it can be when you're dealing with a client where you are, they got these great ideas, but they don't have the money to back it up. Sometimes when that happens, you have to say, thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. Sometimes a personality type issue. Sometimes it's personality. Sometimes it's politics. Sometimes there's certain there's just so much bad negative energy in the room. It's just not going to work. Don't try to force it, ladies and gentlemen. I know sometimes you get hungry. You got a bad month. You're saying, "Look, I know this person is um is a pain in the you know what, but I'm going to take this client anyway." Sometimes the personality is going to be the undoing. Doesn't mean you're right. Doesn't mean that you're wrong. Doesn't mean they're right. Doesn't mean they're wrong. But sometimes those personalities are just not going to match. Sometimes you may just have to say, thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. There are certain industries that are just not a match for your type of service. They just, they're just not. That industry just may not be your bailiwick. And you can't force that square peg into that round hole. You may find that a niche, certain, like in my instance, I do a lot of attorneys. I do a lot of CPAs. I do a lot of, uh, there's certain industries that just seem to be a good fit for me. But if somebody comes to me, like for instance, in real estate, I tend to stay away from real estate clients. I love real estate people. They put you in your house. They do good work for the community, but it's not a match for my service. I'm going to tell you why, because they provide many of these real estate type companies, they provide their own in-house marketing. And sometimes you kind of like you're duplicating the efforts and for whatever reason, some industries just don't match with what you're offering. Don't force it. When that happens, you may have to say thanks, but no thanks. Uh, sometimes it's the geographics. They just so far away. You're not going to be able to reach them. Now, of course, with the inter internet and other types of technology now that's less of a problem but if you have a brick and mortar and you're trying to reach certain people and they're coming you get dealing with uh, travel logistics uh, staffing logistics sometimes you may have to say thanks but no thanks now you have to ask this at all times when i say whenever you get lost you always have to go back to your purpose does it align with your purpose now i probably turn down more business for this reason than any other reason my purpose is not to get quick as rich as you can everything else be damned that does not align with my purpose because i'm dealing with a greater calling i'm about building businesses i'm about putting people to work i'm about building an economic foundation in our community i'm about uplifting people if you are in an industry or if you have a service that is not aligning with that i'm going to have to say thanks but no thanks i remember a few years ago i turned down a big account the, the account had a somewhat racist name and it was selling uh, uh, substances and beverages that I thought was going to be detrimental to our community. I had to say no. Thanks, but no thanks. All money is not good money. Yes, you should forego some, some uh, opportunities. And here's a very important one, timing. Now, this, this gets kind of fuzzy but because sometimes you have to take certain jobs based on where you are in your business life cycle. When you're just getting started, man, you need to eat. <laughs> you need to bring in business. You don't have that luxury of being picky and picking and choosing. You gotta get you have to get money in the door. Sometimes you have to kind of put that that purpose aside for a minute to get some money. That purpose is not gonna do you any jack if it's sitting on the shelf because you can't fund it. 
I'm not saying do something that's going to be that runs against your your spirit or your core, your beliefs. But sometimes you have to suspend that perfectionist uh, purpose driven uh, cause and get some money in the door. But as you start to self-actualize, as your business start to grow and you can start to pick and choose, the timing will change. And you, you, you should be able to say no to businesses later that you were able to say yes to sooner. And every growing business goes through this. So sometimes if you start to self-actualize and you start to grow, get bigger, better, and you start to value your time and money, yes, you said thanks, but no thanks. Now, what are some of the costs of dealing with the wrong customer? What are some of the costs of this old money not being good money? The first one is money itself. You're going to find yourself constantly doing refunds and chargebacks and credits because there was no match to begin with. You would have saved yourself a lot of time and headache by just saying no from the beginning because now instead of you doing what we call death by a thousand paper cuts, you could have said no in the beginning and saved yourself a lot of headache. Your time, you're going to constantly find yourself discounting and reducing your rate when you're dealing with the wrong type of customer. All money is not good money. Yes, sometimes you should have said no. Then there's the bad will that goes with it. If you had said no, you had a less likelihood you're going to have that bad review on Yelp, bad review out here when people searching on your name because you brought in a customer that you knew was not a fit. Bad will, dissatisfied customers are one of the costs of, 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 of not saying no thanks but no thanks. Not even to mention the stress that goes with it. Man, let me tell you, the older I get, the more I like to sleep. Man, I lay up in the bed now, man, I'm like, I'm like a baby. Because I've said, <laughs> I've said no to so many customers. <laughs> now, I, 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 can't, I can't say that 10 years ago. Man, I was like a, <laughs> I was nervous as a snake, man. Let me tell you, I couldn't sleep. I'm biting my nails. I'm drinking coffee. I'm thinking about smoking. I'm surprised I didn't get on drugs. <laughs> because I had the wrong kind of customer, but not anymore because I have self-actualized. I've said no, but no thanks going back to that timing issue. Another cost of uh, having the wrong type of customer is called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is not just a word. It's actually a, a theory. It's a proven theory that if you're working on product A or client A, you can't work on client B. Client A might be making you $100, and client B might make, be making you 100000 The difference between those two is called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is real. Get these folks that are the wrong customer out of the way, and you will increase your sales and your money because of a thing called opportunity cost. Let me wrap this up for you. Let me put a bow on it for you. And what is the solution here? First of all, you may have you got to start meeting folks. Now, of course, during the pandemic, it's gotten a little harder, but you better meet them on Zoom or WebEx or a phone or somewhere. You've got to find out who these people are. Man, some of them, they put a nice little resume together, a little nice pro farmer or a nice LinkedIn page. You start talking to them, man, those things come out. <laughs> uh-uh. No, you got to meet these folks. You got you to gotta take more time to screen your clients. Something else you want to do, test them on a smaller project first. Before you get in bed with them totally, you better find out <laughs> how difficult this person is going to be. In my case, I might say, look, let me go ahead and let's do your website before we start talking about building a 10-year plan, okay? I, by the time that website is done, I'm ready to throw you out in front of a train. Or, well, not, not in front of a train, but I'm really ready to send you packing. I might say, look, well, we were glad to do your website. Let me tell you what, once you do this, for that, for that business plan that you need, or that 10-year plan or that marketing strategy, you might look at another company that's more in line with your goals and your purpose. So you might want to test them on a smaller project before you get totally in bed with them. And yes, it is okay to refer them to somebody who may be better suited. That's not a knock on the client or a knock on you. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes the personality is not right, the industry is not right, sometimes the purpose is not right, sometimes the time isn't right. And as I've said, and I'll continue to say, ladies and gentlemen, Whenever you get lost along this journey, let your purpose be your guide. And that